All right, welcome back everyone. Dr. Ben, not a real doctor. And I've got my friend Madhav Gramki here with me today who is a practicing chiropractor. That's right, a real doctor. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing Madhav? I'm doing awesome. Dude, thanks yeah. for coming in today, man. I'm really excited. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Well, tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so uh, like Ben said, I'm a chiropractor. I've been practicing for a little while now, uh, but also I'm really excited about my kind of the second half of my uh, professional career, which is teaching. I teach anatomy, a little bit of physiology, but mostly anatomy. Uh, and so I find that that has, uh, it really enriches my practice to go back and forth between the two. And uh, I just have a lot of fun, you know, learning from both ends of, uh, both ends of the spectrum. Right so, on, man. So, yeah, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. And, uh, and yeah, happy to have a conversation. With Sweet, you. man. And your practice is here in Colorado Springs. Give it a plug in case anybody local is watching. Yeah, yeah, totally. So integratecairo.com. That's where you can find me. I-N-T-E-G-R-A-T-E. -E, Cairo, C-H-I-R-O. Integrate Cairo. And so I'm right off of Fillmore and Centennial, more or less. Um, yeah. Sweet, yeah. dude. I'd love to help you out and anyone who wants to get checked. Sweet. Yeah. All right, so... Madhav's here, he's going to talk about how spine health affects total body health, how you can't have one without the other really. And as this is his area of expertise, I'm going to kind of let him take it away and we'll see where we go. Yeah, awesome, awesome. So, so yeah, so spinal health relating to whole body health, it might be kind of an abstract thing that maybe a lot of people haven't really even thought about. But it's really interesting how the spine is related to the rest of the body in multiple different ways. So uh, the first one I can talk about is kind of the classic way that chiropractors talk about how the spine is related to the body and then we'll kind of go in some maybe more out of the box explanations in a little bit. But the first one is pretty much through the nervous system, basically. It's connected through the nervous system because the brain and the spinal cord, well, the spinal cord is inside the spine, obviously, right? right? And yeah. so off of the spinal cord, we have little shoot-offs, we have little branches and the nerves are coming off of the spinal cord. It's kind of part of the same, part of the same tree, basically, part of the same river. So it's coming off of the spine and then out of the spine uh, as nerves. And then those nerves are plugging into the muscles, plugging into the organs, plugging into your skin, plugging into literally everything in your whole entire body. Mm. So the brain is communicating with the body through this nervous system. The nervous system is starting in the spine. So the, one of the main ideas of chiropractic is that if you get the spine to work well, then the communication system of that, of the, of the nerve is going to work better than if there's some interference in that spinal system. Yeah. Because we want the brain to be able to talk with the body accurately, right? It's important for, sure. for is right. It's important yeah, for the body absolutely. to know what the body, for, it's important for the brain to know what's going on in the body. Yeah. And so to have that spinal system working well is really helpful for that to happen. So. So that's maybe the first way we can talk about how the spine is related to the rest of the body and how the health of the spine is going to influence the body right. through this system of uh, communication of the nervous system. I feel like there's been, you know, with like polyvagal theory and all that stuff starting to come out, there's been a lot more interest in the nervous system and that it's not just like, oh yeah, it's the nervous system. Like it makes muscles do things and it gives information. It's much more complex and much more integrated into the entire body than just, oh yeah, the nervous system. That's right. Yep. Yep. To totally agree. And the state of the nervous system, like you, 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 I mean, you feel it. Yeah. You, you feel like j jazzed up, revved up, or you feel kind of like a little mellowed out or whatever. And this is literally the state of the nervous system. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's cool. And so a second way I can talk about it is through more physical, physical connections. Yeah. Okay, so uh, a lot of stuff in the body is actually using the spine as an anchor. Okay. Muscles, a lot of muscles. It's I like mean, a hitching post. Exactly, yeah. exactly. A lot of muscles, a very long list of muscles that are using the spine as an anchor point. Uh, and then, so like, for example, your, your lat, you know, a lot of people, we know our lat, we, we pull down with the lat, right? Yep. Well, did you know that the lat is connected to the sacrum yeah. and to the lower spine? Yeah, it's wild, right? It's so interesting because I, we usually think of it as an arm muscle, Yeah. but it's just as much of a spinal muscle as, as it is an arm muscle. So. The one that I always think is really interesting is all the erectors, because people tend to think of it as one big, long muscle, but it's not. It's like lots of little, tiny muscle fibers that 
yes. jump from transverse process to transverse process. And yes. so it's like, you know, that's, that's how you can get like localized problems with the erectors because it's not one big long muscle. You might have an issue with a tiny section here. And it's just like the way we think of the body is in this macro um, cosm and the spine too is just, it's accurate to a certain point until you start to really look at it and you need to do specific things. Yeah. 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 And that's what I love about what I do. I, I'm touching people's spines every day and I'm feeling like, oh, this feels really good and oh, that feels kind of interesting. And I, I bet if we did a little adjustment right there, then, then it would kind of like fit what fit better with the rest of the segments, you know? Yeah. So that's why having the skilled hands is, can be really useful. Although doing the self-care is also really useful. If you do all the stuff that I'm doing and you don't do any of the stuff that you're doing, then it's like, <laughs> well, we're missing a lot of the, right. We're missing a lot there. So <laughs> there's no one answer exactly. that's right for everything. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Yep. So muscular attachments, a lot of fascia is hanging off of the spine too. The fascia and the muscles are oftentimes uh, sort of like melting together. Yeah. So we can almost say it's one and the same thing: the muscles and the fascia grabbing on. One really interesting thing, very very interesting thing to me. And I didn't really quite grasp until I started learning more in the lab about anatomy, uh -huh. but it's the digestive system. Di okay. The digestive system, how do you think your guts are not like spilling out? I don't know. Well, I guess we have the skin. We have a lot of stuff holding it. Right. In. But interesting to note that the root of all of the intestines actually roots onto this fabric, which is rooted onto the spine. Okay. Very interesting. Very interesting. interesting. It's like you, you, you can can op open up the abdomen uh -huh. and pull on the organs and they will not come out I because mean, they're rooted onto the spine. I don't know if that's too much for your audience. No, I mean, I, you know, <laughs> as, as a hunter, you know, like I have, I have dealt with that. And when you're you trying to about? process a deer, it's incredibly hard work to actually get all of that out. It's all like glued in there. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's a perfect, perfect example. Yeah. yeah. If, and if you've ever taken down a deer, you got to get the guts out. Right. Important to do that fast. Right. And so knowing some anatomy is really helpful and you'll notice you have to cut it off of the spine. You have to cut the fabric right. off the spine. So very interesting because we get, as a chiropractor, I get very good results adjusting the spine and helping people's digestion improve. And it's like, how can that possibly happen? Well, here's one mechanism that it's very likely that is happening, you know, it's because, because they're connected. Right. The spine and the digestive system are literally connected in yeah. a very obvious and strong way. So helping the spine is going to influence the digestive system to, to work better. How much, like, I know that, you know, obviously people tend to think of the brain telling the body what to do through the nervous system. Mm. How much of that is going back to the brain? Because oh. I feel like that's really overlooked. Like yes. it's not a one way street. I love this question. <laughs> I love this question because I'm completely on board with you. Actually, we have research now that is showing that more information is going to okay. the brain than going away from the brain. That's interesting more more sensory information, more information about what's happening in the body is being communicated to the brain than okay. the other way around. That's very interesting. Super interesting. It's like when the like the old philosophers when they talk about the brain like hallucinating reality. Because it doesn't like the brain doesn't have any direct connection to the world. It's all reading everything through sensors. Yes. Like it's completely dependent on yes. what's coming into it. It can't directly interact with the yes. world. Yes. And then, you know, as you were talking about with the spine, like if that, it's like telephone, right? If you, you got through eight That's bad right. connections, That's right. then you're not going to be getting an optimal signal. The brain doesn't know what's going on as well. It can't tell everything else what to do as well. That's right. And getting that message as clear as possible is essential if you want to have a healthy body. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And that's why doing the stuff that you're doing, all the movement practices, mm -hmm. is so important because every time you do these movement practices, it's like explosion of information into the brain about uh -huh. what's going on in the body. And so actually doing this movement stuff is, uh, is crucial, essential, very vital to the brain having a healthy representation yeah, of what's going on in the body so that the communication system can be better. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I can't remember when I first started seeing the research coming out, but um, obviously because of my interest, like I do a lot in movement. 
and I they they're starting to see that novel movement, like doing movement that you haven't done before, actually creates neurogenesis. It'll make you grow new neurons, which they thought was impossible until this research started coming out. So like I've always you know. We tend to think of humans and like animals in general as different class because we have a brain and that's why we can think and write and draw. But like more research is starting to come out that makes it look more like we have a brain because we move and figuring out these problems to move through the environment led to being able to look at things symbolically, which is where like language and all the more complex stuff comes from. So like health and movement are you can't break the two up because the brain and nervous system isn't healthy without movement. And that's why, um, like, you know, they, they're showing now that things like crossword puzzles and Sudoku and stuff like that don't help keep your brain going because there's no yes. movement. Like, there's no movement. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's so interesting that people get so excited about these brain games. They're all, I'm, I'm exercising my brain right now with this puzzle or what have yeah. you or what game on your phone. But the there is actually almost zero research that is supporting that this does what it says that it does. But you know where the research is that shows that it does work? What you're trying to do to exercise your brain is with exercise. Is it? It's ex physical exercise is, does the thing that you're trying to do with the, with the crossword puzzle or whatever, or whatever kind of I puzzle. Mean, I, I, unfortunately, yeah. I feel like so often we overcomplicate <laughs> yes. things. It's like, yes, like exactly. it's not easy, but what you need to do to be healthy is really simple. Like, Good food, good movement, good rest, healthy relationships, you that's know, right. like that. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And so that's why I love, I love having people like you doing what you're doing. And I also think that it's really cool to think about what I do from that perspective too. Because like, for example, if you have a, 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 a vertebra in the middle of your back, let's say a T7, I can move that T7 for you. You know, right. but how are you going to move that T7 on your own? Oh, I'm not sure. <laughs> good, good, good luck moving your T7 just on its own, you know, against the other vertebra above and below it. Uh -huh. So this movement, it's a movement of your body, right? Right. But I'm helping you to achieve that movement that is kind of really difficult to do on your own. Yeah. And so I love thinking about what I do from that perspective. It's like I'm helping people to move in a way that you can't really do at home. Yeah. Right. But I also can't do a forward fold for you either. So right. you have to do that part too. Yeah. Right? I just, both, having to get, doing doing both is, uh, yeah, I, I, I just love it. Right on, man. Yeah. Dude, I, I love, because, you know, I've gone to chiropractors before, and we've talked about this before, where it's like you show up and they're like, okay, snap, crackle, pop, two minutes, you're out of the office. Uh -huh. It's like, I'll see you again later this week. And it's like, it gets to be this sort of like, conveyor belt where you just roll yes. through pop pop yes. roll through pop pop yes and you take a very different approach like you spend yes. time with your patients yes you get to know them you find out what their problems are yes. it's not it's not just a you know i'm just going to crack your spine and that's the end of it yeah no way yeah <laughs> dude, i love your yeah. approach tell everybody a little bit what makes that different yeah, yeah rather yeah. than just you know the assembly line that totally. most medical practices are totally totally so so I'm going to hit that from two angles. Number one, even though I have to say I do agree with you, and I see a lot of chiropractors out there doing so-called assembly line also, routine. Also, to be fair, this was almost 20 years ago, the last time I saw a chiropractor. So Fair enough, fair enough. But uh, uh, I, I do, I want to get frustrated at them because I feel like there's so much more that they could be doing for their people. But, but at the same time, I have a story. One of my professors when I was in school, he was in a football accident. He, he was a, a football player and he got into an accident and he was paralyzed from the waist down. Okay. He was told, get used to your new life in a wheelchair. This is your life now in a wheelchair. And he basically said, no. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't accept. Yeah. I don't accept that. So he went to a chiropractor who does exactly this type of assembly line you know, non-specific, like, wah, 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 ba, 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 next. Yeah. Like, same routine on everyone, we call it the flying seven routine. <laughs> the flying seven routine, because it's the same seven adjustments on every single person, and you have your little foo, 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 and then you can do it in, like, three minutes and be done. Okay. Now, he went to a person like this, and he is now a professor at Life University, 
walking around no doing kidding. all over the place and he's a perfectly normal healthy guy you would have Dude, never known that anything awesome. happened so it's like i want to bash these guys <laughs> I mean, if you're but getting at the, the results, same time, you're getting the results. Yeah, they're I helping, guess, yeah. they're helping yeah. people, so I can't say too much. Now, yeah. with that being said, I take my time. <laughs> <laughs> with that being said, I take my time with my people because, especially with my background in the anatomy lab, I see that there's so much more in the body than just the spine. Yeah. You know, there's like a gajillion other things in your body other than your spine. So why would I overlook that? Yeah. You know, why would I skip past that? If I'm familiar with it, if I know how to interact with it, I'm going to. Yeah. You know, and so I can, I've gotten uh, pretty comfortable with checking, you know, the, the joints of the arm, the joints of the leg, you know, the uh, front of the body, the viscera, cranial work. I have a background in cranial work. And so I'm kind of incorporating all of that into one session that my hope is, is as complete and holistic as possible. Yeah chiropractors are like oh i'm a holistic person but i'm only going to touch your spine <laughs> it's like do you know what the word holistic means <laughs> that's not what it means <laughs> it's just a buzzword at it's that a, point <laughs> it's a buzzword so i'm trying to actually be a holistic practitioner and you know and addressing yeah. the whole body and so it takes time to do that and i'm not seeing as many people so that means maybe the business isn't quite good right. so a lot of chiropractors are like oh you're being silly here you could be making more money it's like yeah but if I feel better about my work, I have a feeling that that's going to actually be better for yeah. business over time, you know, even yeah. though. So anyway, yeah. I mean, I, I feel for the system. Like, you know, I, I've known people who've gone through medical school and they come out with half a million, million dollars in debt. Like, yeah. student loan payments are real. Like, you got to pay the bills. I, it's true. I totally understand that. It's true. And like, it's not that I'm, you know, I, it's not the, the individuals that I really have a problem with. It's our whole system that is basically designed in a way that doesn't allow doctors to take time with their patients and do, you know, real meaningful getting to know you. Cause you know, a big part of what I do is my mom was a massage therapist and you get a little bit of psychology training because mm -hmm. as you're working on muscles, you might release something like somatics are real. We know that emotions are stored in physical tissues. And if you poke somebody in a particular way, you might release that emotion and somebody might have a complete meltdown on your table and you got to be able to deal with that. So <clears throat> even though like adjustments help and move things along, if they're not looking at the underlying emotional thing, the problem could continue to man manifest as well. So it's like Absolutely. If, if you don't get the time to talk to people and find out what else is going on that could be causing this problem, like they're going to be dealing with this problem. You're going to be dealing with this problem with them. And you're never going to get to that next layer of the onion because it's like, all right, well, we stripped that layer off. Oh, it's back. It's we stripped back. this layer off. It's back. Exactly. So, you know, in, in the medical profession, it's beneficial to get to know your patients and really know what's going on there. That's right. That's right. Yep. I, I have so many stories that could, that, could, <laughs> that could pack that up. You know, it's like it only is going to... Maybe not only, but it's just so much easier for it to come out in conversation. Yeah. You know, if you just get to know your people a little yeah. bit, it's like they 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 have they have stuff that really, if you let them, if you give them a space for them to work it out themselves, you know, it's like people want to be heard, and I really feel strongly that that being heard is the first part of the healing process. Yeah. You know, and if you don't ever sure. give, give someone that opportunity to feel heard then you're missing out on the most important yeah. part of the process. It's Absolutely. like, how are we, you know, so, so I do an hour. My first visit is always an hour. Man, that's awesome. My first visit is an hour because I want to talk with you. I want to figure it out. Let's front load the work, you know, let's, yeah. so that I can work better. You know, that's, yeah. that's my idea. I mean, from my perspective, like with what I do is, you know, I don't like to think of like a trainer. I like to think more of like a coach or a facilitator because the reality is like, I'm not doing anything. The person's doing everything. Like my client's doing everything. I'm just giving the information and the direction and the tools. Like I'm not healing them. I'm not making them move better. They're doing that on their own. I'm just like pointing them in the direction and clearing the path a little bit to, to make it easier for them to navigate that route. Like I don't, I don't ever want to think that like I did this, you know, cause that's not how it works. That's not how it works. That's not how it works at all. Yeah. It feels good to think yeah, of it right? that way. The ego is going, but it's not how it works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Right?
Uh, I mean, even with like hardcore pharmaceuticals, you know, you think of the pill as curing the disease, but it doesn't. It just allows the body, it, right. you know, it, may, it knocks the symptoms down enough or, you know, whatever. So the body can do its thing. It's true. And, take, and it's true. Uh, medical FDA says only a drug can cure or treat or prevent a disease. So not medical advice. I'm <laughs> no. just talking biology. <laughs> <laughs> But even like uh, I think on uh, Doctor Strange, this movie Doctor Strange, mm-hmm. one of the when he goes to to Nepal or wherever it is that he goes, this the uh, premise is that this Doctor Strange is a neurosurgeon, and he goes to Nepal because he needs help with his own self that Western science didn't give him. So the what one of the one of the wisdom people said, she said, when you make a cut in a person, is it the is it you that heals that cut after yeah. or is it the body that heals the cut after? And he's kind of stumped like, <laughs> Oh, I got, I thought I was doing everything, but I guess you're right. It's yeah. like, I'm actually not the one doing the healing. I just yeah. make the cut and then the body does its thing. So. Like even in the case of stitches, like the stitches just hold it close so it can heal so, more easily. So the like, body can do its thing. As a guy who's been through more than my fair share of lacerations, and <laughs> the ones that didn't get stitches, even that should have had stitches healed well, I won't say healed just as well, but they healed. They're yeah. closed. Like yes, they don't look as pretty, but still closed up. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, I don't want to keep you too long. Is there anything else you want to say before we wrap up for today here? Mm, uh, no, I guess. Uh, cool, man. That, that feels that feels good to me. Right on. Yep, yep. Everyone, you keep following his stuff. You keep doing what he says because this is a smart guy right here. So thank you so much for for having me on. Appreciate it. It's an honor to be your Dude, friend. You're welcome. And, uh, Anytime. Awesome. awesome. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, you know, similar but different perspective from what I usually give. I feel like we're pretty much on the same wavelength, but he is an expert in his area. So it was a pleasure to have him on here and have him share his information. That's all we got for you today. If you like the video, smash the thumbs up, share the video with your friends. And if you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing. Until next time, keep your life in motion. <laughs>